OK, let's go to animation. How does PowerPoint animation work? So PowerPoint is by default very simplistic tool. It has slides. When you run a slide. It waits for you to do something. The most common thing we do is press right arrow or click. That's called a trigger. So the default trigger is either click or right arrow. And when there is a trigger, it does an action. Default action is go to next slide. Again, it waits for a trigger. Again, does the default action next slide. When the last slide comes, depending on the setting, whether it'll either show end of show or just finish off. After that, it's done. So remember everything in the running of a PowerPoint presentation is trigger and action. So if you want to do something other than what I just showed you, you have to tell PowerPoint this is a new trigger and I will tell you what action to do. So that whole concept of animation is based on this simple principle. You define the trigger, you define the action. Now animation works within the slide. Whereas transitions work between slides. So just to show you that part. I'm going to give a different color to this slide. There is no animation anyway. Between the two slides there is transition. So if I want this to push the other one, I can just do preview. It will be like this. So transition happens between slides and animation happens within the slide. The best way to learn animation is to take a practical example. I have four cars. This is the start and we want them to do a race. So let's. Have this is the finish. Now, how do we go about doing this? First of all, let's talk about one car and then we'll figure out what to do with other cars. I want this car to move from here to here. That's something which is not going to happen by default in PowerPoint. So I need to tell PowerPoint when I click don't go to next slide. When I click this car should move from here to here. That means I have to do animation. Now animation has this menu and this is absolutely misunderstood. Most people will go and add animation from here. That is wrong. Add animation is here. When you are adding the animation for the first time, it doesn't matter whether you add it from here or here, but if there is already an animation and then you add a second one from here, the first one is overwritten. If you really want to add to an animation which exists, the only way is from here. But most people never add more than one animation to an object, so we have not understood the difference. Now in order to understand what exactly is happening, it's very important to keep the animation pane open. Right now there is nothing. This is the simplest way to understand any of these objects on this slide. Does it have animation or not? Now generally what happens each object has a name and the animation shows the object name. And the names can be confusing. So along with the animation pane, it's also important to keep the solish selection pane on. Selection pane is here. Home select selection pane. Now all these are pictures. So now in order to never get confused in life, especially when you are doing animation, it's a very good idea to rename them. So I'll just call it white car. Exact comprehensive verbo is not required. As long as you understand what it is, that's fine. So I'll call this the car with stripes, something like that. R and W. And this one is red. That is good enough for me. Now state connector, state connector. See, we will not know which one is start, which one is finish. So this is ST and this is end. This is absolutely necessary. If there are only few objects, you can get away without it, but soon it will bite you. So good idea to always give names. Now before we go into the movement, let's understand the types of animation. There are four types of animation. Entrance, emphasis, exit and motion path. In simple terms, it means. When a slide starts, when a slide starts, that slide has some objects in it. Are those objects always visible 
or you want them to come on the slide after the slide has shown itself. If you want the object to be invisible when the slide is shown and then bring it on, then you use the appear animation. Entrance effect, it's not called appear animation. Appear is one of the entrance effects. So if you want the object to be not visible when the slide is shown and bring it up after some time, then you use entrance. So let me do that. Um, the green ones are entrance. So what did I just do? I'll just do it again. I selected a car and added one of the entrance effects. The simplest effect is called appear. And appear is either there or not there. So its duration is zero. It's starting at point zero. Also understand this is a little confusing at the bottom. There is a timeline. Those who understand animation video editing are used to timeline. Normally timeline is on top. Unfortunately here is at the bottom and nobody looks at it. So if you are doing complex things, first you should not only look at it, you should zoom into it so that you can actually see the seconds. Or even more details of a second. Right now you'll notice that this is zero. Ideally there should have been a line connecting the two so you understand, but there is no such facility right now. To my knowledge, there is no way to get it on top. Anyway, so remember some animations take time. Some animations don't need time. Appear is the one which does not need time. So now what have I said? Apply appear entrance animation to the car. So now when I run the slide, that car is not visible because it is waiting for my trigger called click for that animation to execute. So now when I do the trigger, which is click, the car will come. So that is what it means on mouse click. That's the trigger start on click or from here start on click. I don't want it to start on click. It should come after a delay. Then you go to timing and say I don't want to click. I want to start it with previous with previous means what with previous event. What was the previous event? In this case, the slide being shown is the event, but I want it to come after one second of delay. Now I am not clicking, but the slide it will automatically come after whatever delay I have mentioned. So you need to understand the timing portion of it. I can change this or I can say. After previous before previous, so I say after previous with a delay of two seconds after previous event, which is slide being shown. So after two seconds, this will come. So that is the entrance effect. The next effect is you, if you want the object to be visible while the slide is shown, you don't need entrance effect. In this case, we want all four cars to be visible, so I'm not putting entrance effect. Now the next is. While the object is being shown on the screen, does it do anything to attract attention? So there are many of them. Some of them work with shapes. Some of them work with text. So anything with an A inside will work only with text because I've selected an object that is disabled. A picture will not work with those containing these things. They are disabled. So for example, I want to show that this start is running. This car is running. Maybe I use this data. Now notice this has become one second. How do I know the duration? Tooltip tells you the duration. It doesn't actually tell you the duration. It tells you the starting time and ending time. What does that mean? When I click this car will use emphasis effect called theta for one second and then stop. So I click. Done. Now this was too slow. What do I do? Look at the cursor. This means move. What did I just do? I put a delay. So if I just go here, notice I put a 0.5 second delay. I don't want that. So be careful about the cursor. This means move it in the timeline. This means the duration. So now I'm making 0.3 seconds duration. So now it will theta very fast, but I want to make that guy continue doing it. What do you do then? Then you double click on it go to timing and say how often should it repeat? Generally, unless there is a very specific reason, don't use a number. You either say till next click or till end of slide. 
OK, so now what happens it is going to continue doing it as though it is idling there or misfiring, whatever you want to call it. Now I want that to happen for all the cars because all cars are running. OK, so now like format painter, I have animation painter. So you go to the object. Animation painter is here. It's a good idea to put it in quick access toolbar. Pick up the animation, double click so that I can apply it to multiple objects and then. Done. Now what is going to happen? I will need four clicks to make this happen. I don't want that. In the first click itself, I want all of them to start running. In fact, how do I do that? Go to the second, third, fourth and say start with previous. Start with previous is an incomplete sentence. Start with previous event. The moment I click, all start. But this is looking too artificial. I obviously they are idling, but their frequency is not going to be same. They are not going to idle in synchronous manner. So this is the time we use both. We just offset them a little. So that they are not synchronized. And someone is idling faster, slower, whatever the frequency. like that. So with little bit of effort, a lot of things can be managed. OK, so far so good. Now what happens is third type of animation. Exit. When is exit required? Exit is required not in this case, but generally exit is required. I'll give you an example. You are showing some screenshots. So I want to say I go to file options. OK, I have this dialog. I'm just going to paste this dialog there. This is a picture. And then I want to show from general tab event to advanced tab. So I'm again going to go to file options, go to advanced tab and take another screenshot. Right screenshot as well. Make it the same size. Now in this I want to show both of them one after another. Then what do I do? Right now if I put animation for both, what is going to happen? I have selected both of them. I'm going to animation. I'm just putting appear. What happened? The same click both came. No, I want separate. So first click picture four picture six, but that's also not going to work. Yes, first click, second click, fine. Now I have a third picture. Let's I'm just going to simulate this and I'm just going to make a bigger version of this just as a representation of a third picture like this. Now. What I want is and maybe I want to show them offset or something like that. Now when I'm showing it one by one, I want the previous one to go away. Now what do I do? I have to put exit animation for the second one. So now notice what I'm doing. Picture six, which is the middle one, has this. So when I click, it shows me the animation associated with it. Now if I put from here, exit or disappear, notice what happened? The entrance effect was replaced by it, and that is a very common mistake. People get confused. So this is the time you select the correct object. Add animation and now say disappear. Now this got its own. Now what I really want is when picture seven comes, six should disappear along with it. So picture seven coming in is a click entrance. That should be associated with the exit of the previous picture. So start with previous. So now it will look correct. This one, second one. Now when the third one comes, first one is gone. We didn't see that properly. I'll keep all of them separate, then you will see. So this is picture four. This is picture six. It has two animations, remember, and this is seven. So picture this one has no exit animation, so this will stay. This one is entrance. The third one comes 
Along with that entrance, this guy exits. That is how you can have sequence. In case of these cars, we are not making them disappear. So we don't need the disappear, but we need the other one here, which is motion path. So obviously this is going to move. So let's take one car and see what happens. Now I'm going to put motion path. By default, it goes downwards. Green means starting point, red means ending point. You move the ending point and you will see this. Generally, you will see. Let me save this. In older version, you could not see the end point. Now it shows you the picture for the end point as well. I'm not seeing it. I don't know why. Maybe because I have not saved it. Anyone knows the answer? It should show a small transparent thumbnail of the endpoint as well. You have anyway. overridden the teeter animation. Sorry. Yeah, I have overridden the teeter that I will manage. So I go here. This time I go to add animation, go to line animation, and now I position the car wherever I want it to be. I don't know why that other animation is not coming. It should come. It should show a faint version of it. Never mind. Now what did I just do? I'm saying on the next click, this car is going to go from here to here in two seconds. So let's see how that works. Now these cars are already idling. I don't want to click for it. As soon as I show the slide, they let them start idling. So I'm removing this and say start with previous. So now they will continue idling. But when I click now, this car will move from here to here. That is how it was working. Now also notice it. I don't know how well you can see it on a screen share, but it didn't suddenly go. There was an acceleration phase, deceleration phase, and then it had a constant speed. So that acceleration deceleration is under our control. This is smooth start, smooth end, and bounce and we'll see later. Acceleration, deceleration. So this, if I do like this, then it will look abrupt. Abrupt in the sense it will start abruptly, constant speed and suddenly stop as though there was some it hit a roadblock, something like that. So depending on the type of object which you are trying to animate, depending on how that object works in real life, you should or should not give start and end. For example, if I was showing a plane in cruise, then I should not use smooth start and smooth end. OK, so far so good. This is going obviously we want it to reach somewhere here. Now we will apply animation to all of them. So I choose the object. And then go to animation painter. Double click apply apply apply. Obviously at this stage none of them are going to win. Why not? First of all, notice what happened when I applied the animation. What happened? They got mixed up, so rearranging is also important. All of these cars. Movement should be. After they start, but then do I need each car to have a trigger? No, we are going to say three, two, one, go and all of them are going to go together. So in this case, we need only one trigger. So any of the cars which is on the top you choose and then you say start with previous. And then this is like a race now. Obviously all are going to win because they're at the same animation. So now if you want to make a particular car win, what can you do? It's all under your control. So maybe I make this. Now what happened? Let's see. This one. I increase the length it has to travel, so obviously its speed increased. So that is how you have control. Or you can change the path, make it a little data like that. Or you can make a curved path. All that is under your control. So this is how you use animation to achieve what you want. 
OK. I can talk much more about this, but let's take questions because I'm already 10 minutes beyond time. It was a really fantastic session, Nitin Omakant here. Hi, Omakant, how are you? Fine, fine, boss. Really good session, actually. Something new we learned today, uh, both in Word as well as in PowerPoint. Certainly, we can practice this and come back to you with more questions in next session, actually. Sure. So just to complete the topic, there is something called Morph, which could have been used to do this. So notice what I did. I went to the slide. I removed all the animation. Nothing, no animation. Then I duplicated this slide. And now I am arranging their final position. I want this car to win. Maybe they moved around a little. That's it. On slide one, there is no animation. On slide two, there is no animation. All I now go and do is go to second slide, go to transitions, not animation, and say morph. And then I decide all this should happen over how much time. Let's prolong the race a little. I'll make it four seconds. That's it. Now I go to first slide, make sure no transition. Second slide, morph transition, decide the duration. That's it. So now what happens? This is morph. It's not a substitute to animation. Some things could have been done in animation as well as morph. Some things can only be done in morph, cannot be done in animation. Some things can only be done in animation, cannot be done in morph. For example, that teeter where the car was idling, morph can't do it. So some things animation can do. What can morph do which animation can't do? Many things it can do. It can transform the object. It can change the size, rotation, color, and all that starting and ending point, the in-between frames, it will automatically generate. So there are two different things. Some many cases you use them together as well. But remember, morph is also there. All right, any other questions? OK, no questions, fine. I'll show you an example of how all this animation stuff can be nicely used in day to day work. And then we'll finish. I'm just trying to find that particular slide. Give me a second. Yeah. So this is a slide where I'm trying to tell people in Teams, what is the difference between chat and a conversation? So this is chat. Sorry, not this one, hold on. So this one. Hey. So I have chat and conversation. Now I want to highlight the differences between the two. Now I want to illustrate that in chat there is only one place to type. So that lower part looks like a part of the image, but it is not. It's a broken image, so I can actually grow and shrink so I can highlight it separately. Then I want to say questions and answers get mixed up. So I've done that by putting it in chronological order, but using color coding of which question and which answer and how they are getting mixed up. On the other side here, this is conversation again like chat conversation also has a text box, so that brings up this is an animation. But 
these guys have reply also. So again, they are two separate pictures so that I can just zoom, grow and shrink. And then I want to show the same question answer happening here in random order, but still there is structure being preserved. So. And then compare all this with complete chaos, which is called email, which is obviously a disaster. So if you see this slide, a lot of animation will have been created to make this happen. But once you understand the concept, then this is no longer complex and it actually helps you in telling the story in a more effective manner, whatever the story might be. OK, so let's finish to finish. What are we going to do? We should finish also in style, right? So let me show you. How to create a thank you slide. A different kind of thank you slide. What you do is you write all the characters. Obviously this is not thank you. Then you duplicate the slide. Here you type. Thank you. Make it bigger, whatever you want. Then go to the second slide. Apply transition. Unfortunately, transition doesn't work on text by default. You go to effect option and say characters and just to make it a little more interesting. Notice I have increased the font size and I'm going to change the color. So let's put color. Now what is PowerPoint going to do? It is going to compare the two slides and the text on it and find out which text is here and here. Then it'll say, oh, there is T here. Where is T here? Here. Oh, so now in those two seconds of transition, that T has to migrate from there to here, like that for H, like that for N and so on. And then in the meantime, it is checking. What was this color? Oh, this was black. That is blue. So while that is happening, it is also going to smoothly find the ramp of colors, gradient colors between black and red and do that as well. Just to make that a little visible, I'm going to give two different colors. Let's put blue here and red here. There's no animation anywhere and then it works like this. I put two seconds as default. May not have seen very well, so I'm just going to increase this to five seconds so that you can see and appreciate how much work Morph is doing. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Sundar has one last question. Would a slide with animation take up more space? No animations are internally kept as mathematical equations, so no. Neither morph nor animation will increase file size. But in morph, because we are duplicating slides, yes, that has a side effect, but things morph can do, animation can't do. So both of them have a place. Thank you so much. Great session. Lot of insights. Yeah, both the sessions are very fantastic. Thanks a lot again. Great. Any other questions, comments? All right. If no questions, no comments, then let's close for the day. On 4th of December, right? We are going to have a very different kind of session. The session is titled FYI, means fortunately you are inefficient. Uh, people from PACT will know why, but uh, idea is I have been always telling people to be efficient, more efficient, but while discussing with people, we realize that inefficiency also has a place. So it's more of a debate. We are actually going to have a sort of a dis debate, not just with me. My colleague Anindo is also going to be there and mm. the audience. So Anindo is also here. So Anindo, you want to just give a brief of what we intend to do in the debate? Certainly. 
Um, so the idea is that uh, while the conventional logic says that uh, efficiency is the only way to go in any corporate or work environment, uh, there are certain situations, certain job roles or certain types of work, especially now in the uh, remote work era, uh, where efficiency may not be business beneficial. Uh, there are situations where efficiency may actually be harmful to some aspect of the business. And that some to take, take just one, one example, one of those aspects is colleague goodwill can get harmed if one person is too inefficient. I'm just taking one example now. I think in the debate, I will we will uh, go back and forth on several such situations where business reality dictates that efficiency or perfect efficiency is not the ideal. So and uh, we, we would love to have uh, each of your own ideas of situations or job roles or functions where inefficiency is beneficial or required. That's it. So that's it. Thank you.